Seems you like to see stories about me being aggressive. Ah, I can tell you a story about putting somebody in the hospital without ever laying a finger on them. Told you, Dee Dee and I, we fished Alaska. We went up and we did the halibut from down Seattle up through Sitka and along through, I got off on Kodiak Island in, uh, stayed in Kodiak City. And when we rolled into that place, the guy that we were selling the fish that we had to, he said, where are you going after this? And I said, Skipper says we're going to the Bering Straits. And he looked at the boat and he said, get off this boat. You will die. And I said, okay. And I pretty much just threw my bag off of the damn dock. You know, just, I trusted this guy, especially after everything we'd gone through where D-Day was just a funny apparition in this in this land set that we had. You know, D-Day should not even have existed. He should have been at the bottom of the ocean on a 300 pound anchor, if not for me, already at that point. So, get off this boat, you will die. I say, okay. And I, uh, I didn't do all my gear work. I sold it out to people that were living in the area. And I got off that boat immediately and went to work in the cannery there because we didn't make any money on the boat. I went straight to the homeless shelter at midnight one night in the middle of the night and they let me in and they said they weren't supposed to. It was already too late, but I was sober. And I walked into the reek of this place. I'll tell you what, the first night you ever sleep in a homeless shelter has got to be quite like the first night you ever sleep in prison. It's an odd experience. You don't know what's going to happen. But then, after I got in there, and I got the job in the cannery, and D-Day came to the cannery, and he moved into the homeless shelter also, we'd be laying there under the, under the crucifix on the wall on our mats, ah, sleeping. But there would be all kinds of things. So many stories I can tell about that place. But this one, you said you wanted to hear about anger. You said you wanted to hear about rage. I was sitting there and it was like June, July of Alaska summer. The sun was up to 4 a.m. and you would just see it there on uh, Kodiak City. It would just go down and then be coming back up again. It never really got dark. And so they're working in the cannery before Dee Dee and I split ways. I was reading a book. I had bought a book with Fryer in the Glens Market in Gaylord, Michigan one night. The one time Fryer came to Gaylord, Michigan, we were loaded and walking through Glens Market and family centers. And I saw this on the bookshelf, PMS and you. Is that what it says? Yeah. And I thought, There's no better way of looking like you care than reading a book like this. But really, in truth, 
you're just getting an idea of what it is you're fighting against. And it's written by, by some dude that's a doctor along with a woman. And the one girl that I offered this book to, she said, oh, it's written by a man, what does he know? I said, well, it's got a woman involved. They tried, they tried to do their damn best. And so I'm sitting there reading this book in the homeless shelter, Brother Francis's homeless shelter. And uh, look at that. Oh, well, just dropped the cigarette, busted it right now. But uh, there, there was a picture of a uterus. And so I drew a little tail on it, you know, like there, and I gave it a rattle. I put an angry look on its face. It's got its arms in your And then it's got a slime trail behind it, like a damn earwig. There's the one animal that I kill constantly when I see them. Every time I see them, I kill an earwig because I've learned that they leave slime trails because of a book I was reading once. I saw it, it's, I get, yeah, earwig. And then you look and there's a slime trail on it the next day, it turned brown. They draw others in, but I, I had to draw that picture as I was reading PMS and you. It's talking about anti-prostaglandins and such things and, and of follicle stimulating hormones and all kinds of good stuff. Oh, yeah. Why you don't want to drink diet soft drinks because they're high in sodium and they cause bloating. Things like that. But, uh, so yeah, I drew that in there. And I'm sitting there reading this book because it'd be late at night. I could still go to sleep, wake up in the morning to uh, go to my job in the cannery. And there was this guy, Henry. Oh, look. There was this guy, Henry, that... See, I've got highlighting. I read this book like a scientist. I don't know what they got to use against you. And there's this night I'm sitting there reading this book and this guy Henry gets up and he starts closing all the drapes on the windows. The light's not coming in. The lights aren't even out. And Well, 10 o'clock lights out, 11 o'clock, everybody down. And uh, I said, hey, man, you want to leave that open? I'm trying to read here. And he says, that's all fine and dandy, but some of us got to work in the morning. And I said, mm, I'm not just some bum staying in this place. I got a job. I'm going to work in the morning, too. And I was just so frustrated at that point with evidently the way things were going. And I said, you shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear it anymore. And he just shut the fuck up. And I didn't hear anymore. And he went and he laid down on his mat. And he was lying on his mat for about five, ten minutes. And I just looked at him as I'm reading my PMS in you book. I, he just don't fuck with me. And uh, he gets up. He goes into the other room. And he never comes back. Next morning, waking up, his shit's still all there. And I said, what the hell happened to Henry? And D-Day and I, we switched jobs, so he was working at a different area, and we ran into each other out on the street one day, and he said, I saw Henry. I said, oh, who? And he said, Henry, he said, he's been in the hospital for the last 
two weeks. I said, what are you talking about? He said the one, I said, you shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear him. He had a perforated ulcer and it exploded. Just like Rowan Mayfair, you know. Anne Rice's The Witching Hour without even putting a finger on the guy. I hospitalized him, almost killed him, and put him out of my life for two weeks. How's that? It's all about learning a little bit more about the little bit of things we don't know. Just learn it.